So, what if the South had its own Pokemon region? What would it look like? What animals would be on the roster? What cultural influences would make their way into the designs? Now, I've spent a lot of my life watching a lot of Pokemon regions, and I've never seen a Pokemon region based on the Deep South. And honestly, I'm a little tired of the shallow, reductive, and frankly classist and racist few people have of the South. I've heard every negative thing you could imagine, and I'd love to use a Pokemon region as an excuse to highlight some of the beautiful art, culture, and people of my home states. I've lived all over the South, and we've got some rich culture that just doesn't get a lot of time in the spotlight. And you might even be shocked to find out just how much American culture was born here. I'm talking influences from a border as far west as Texas, south as Louisiana, east, the whole east coast, north as Kentucky with the occasional influence that reaches a little further out, or, or maybe just an example of like American culture in general. I do have an idea for starters, but I think I'd just like to brainstorm just a bit more before I get started on those. Instead, I'm just going to sketch out some basic shapes. I made a bean body, just started sketching some typical pokemon -ish shapes, legs, with no real animal in mind. I then drew some of the Route 1 basics. I drew a bug head, I drew a little bird with a little attitude, and it was then that I decided to just go ahead with the bug that I drew. It was very cute, and I was happy with its face. When I think about bugs, and bugs that I associate with the South, I'm thinking grasshoppers, crickets, ants, mosquitoes. But there's no bug I associate more with a southern afternoon than fireflies. Well, maybe mosquitoes, but I, I, I think I'd like to make a firefly. And in my home state of Tennessee, we've actually got a firefly that's famous for its synchronized flashes. So I think that'd be an interesting place to start this design. So, it turns out most firefly larvae are actually predators. They prey on snails, slugs, and other larvae. I wanted to lean into this, especially as it sets itself apart from other Route 1 bug types, which are typically exclusively prey Pokemon. And I wanted to lean that way without making it outright aggressive looking. Something that's largely friendly with maybe an edge to it. So I, I've drawn, I've also drawn it in sort of a onesie, and if you look at the larva, there's a, like a little guy in there that extends forward from that hard outer shell with, and it looks like it's got little, little thingies raised up. And I, and I wanted to, I turned those into arms. I wanted the raised arms to be like a baby asking to be picked up. But if you're looking at the whole shape of the whole creature, it looks more like it's lunging. And if you've ever seen those glowworm toys from the 80s and 90s, this Fakemon evokes some of that look, some of that aesthetic. I also abstracted the segmented body into this flowing, scale-like look. After I made this rough sketch, I went ahead and went to design the evolution, just in case it informed some of the designs, the colors, if it changed how I felt about it entirely. And this is where the true inspiration really starts to shine. I found out many of the species of firefly use their flashes to mimic other firefly species and smaller males of their own species to eat them. And when I looked at most of the pictures of the bugs, I found that most of the images showed it with their wings folded and when together it looked like a single shape, making me think about a cloak. So I then went and based it after vampires. In the same way vampires mimic human romance to lure in victims, this fake mon mimics the mating flashes of other fireflies and other Pokemon to lure them in. I wanted to give it a little bit more personality. I think that's where Pokemon designs shine the brightest. I really think that's where it's like at its best is in the personality. The problem is most bug Pokemon just don't have a mouth. And if they do, it's a very heavily simplified depiction of a bug mouth. Not exactly as expressive as what I'm looking for. So I abstracted the bug mouth and kind of crossed it with vampire fangs. And I gave it a little raised eye expression and a little bit of like a hard like bug mouth mustache. And I found the antenna eyebrows to be a fun and maybe a little flirty way to show expression. It evokes a sort of gentleman aura. I think it's fun. I then went and cleaned up the line work and colored the first evolution, taking the colors largely directly from the inspiration and giving it a more Pokemon-like pattern. Light underbelly, accents of the brighter color, something fairly simple. Meet Foteethi, the teething Pokemon. 
don't let its appearance confuse you. While cute, this Pokemon can be surprisingly aggressive, and can often be found hunting snails and other larvae. Using its sharp teeth, it drains fluids from its prey. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's super cute. It's fun. I would 100% catch this bug. I then went back and I did the same process of cleaning and coloring for the evolution. Meet Vampulse, the entrancing Pokemon. Vampulse uses its flashing abdomen to communicate with others of its species. Both people and Pokemon alike have a hard time looking away from the flashes, and it uses that to its advantage when hunting its victims. I'm really happy with how these turned out, and I'll definitely be working on more. So subscribe if you want to see more. I've got a ton of ideas, and if you're from the South, please let me know if you have any ideas on inspirations that you think shouldn't be missed.